In this video, I'll be talking about how polymers are able to be used in flexible screen technology and what properties allow polymers to be used in this way. So flexible screen technology is something that's been in the works for a while now. In 2007, Sony released the XEL1, which was the first OLED television. And in 2013, Samsung and LG both brought phones onto the market that had subtle curves to their displays. Or one of these was the Samsung Galaxy Round and the other was the LG G Flex. So recently, a lot of phone companies have been moving over to using OLED screens rather than the typical LCD screens. And this is because of the use of polymers in OLED screens. Okay, so what is the difference between LCD screens versus OLED screens? So starting with LCD screens, this stands for liquid crystal displays, and these are typically built around a glass base. More recently, developers have been working on technology behind OLED screens, which stands for organic light emitting diode. So where OLED screens differ is that the displays are emissive, meaning that they produce their own light basically, unlike LCDs which are non-emissive, and they're instead illuminated by a backlight. This is because the pixels on OLED screens are built into the screen itself rather than behind it and projecting through a glass pane. So when you touch an OLED screen, you're actually touching the display itself rather than a layer of glass in front of it. And this means that the OLEDs have the advantage of being thinner and more flexible than LCDs because they have fewer components in them. So essentially they don't need a backlight. This does mean that these screens therefore need very specific properties if we're gonna use them for foldable phones. They need to be flexible, durable, shatterproof, clear, and also lightweight. So developers tend to use polymers for the flexible screens used in OLEDs. And this is because polymers can have a range of different properties, which are very promising for flexible displays. This involves characteristics including transparency, lightweight, flexibility, and robustness. Thermoplastic semi-crystalline polymers available for flexible screen displays includes polyethylene terephthalate, or more commonly known as PET, polyethylene naphthalate, and many others. So it's debated which is the best polymer to use for this technology. Polyimide is a common option, but LG has recently uncovered its secret to a non-creasable phone, and that is due to the use of their PET screen. It's a kind of polyester which is used for many things depending on its synthesis, and one of the uses is flexible displays. PET is perfect for this use. So because of the benzene ring in the molecular chain, um, PET has a rigid structure which leads to high melting points over 500 Kelvin and also great strength which is obviously really important for phones to be durable and shatterproof. Um, it's also good to mention that PET films also do not discolor in light so the colours of the phone will not be affected. Um, another advantage of PET is that reportedly it has better clarity, coefficient of thermal expansion or CTE, good chemical resistance, moisture absorption, and it's also cost effective to use. However, it's also reported that the surface roughness is not so good for PET. So phone companies like LG can synthesize PET pretty easily. PET can be made into a fiber which has polymer chains running in one direction. So this is commonly used for specialist material in parachute suits and also specialist clothing. It can also be made into a film which has chains running in two directions or packaging which has chains running in three directions. So for polymer OLED screens or POLEDs used in flexible screen technology, they need to be relatively flexible so they can't have molecules oriented in three directions or else the plastic will have the rigidity of plastic packaging used in supermarkets which is not very useful. So therefore the polymers used are PET films which are a lot more flexible. Essentially, the polymer is used for the emissive layer or the light emitting layer. And that's actually the reason that it's called OLEDs because the organic is referring to the polymer layer. So the manufacturing of PET involves the polymerization of ethane 1,2-diol reacting with benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. There is two routes which are possible to produce the monomer necessary for this reaction. So the preferred route is to carry out a direct esterification which is self-catalyzed by the carboxylic acid group. This is because very pure acid is now readily available in large quantities. However, it is also possible to react ethane 1,2-diol with the dimethyl ester of benzene 1,2-dicarboxylic acid which requires the use of an acid catalyst and also involves ester interchange. So the monomer then undergoes polycondensation with the elimination of ethane 1,2-diol, which is a condensation reaction. The polycondensation stage requires a catalyst 
antimony 3 oxide and is carried out at high temperatures of about 535 to 575 kelvin so these harsh conditions are not environmentally friendly but ethane 1 2 diol is able to be recycled polyester production can be carried out using both batch and continuous processes so there's still a lot of further development to be made in this field. Samsung is still being criticised for their screens as sometimes they can crease after excessive use. LG, however, has apparently come up with a solution. The company stated that the new foldable display is made using a special coating material that is attached to both sides of the transparent PET film, which should effectively decrease the amount of creasing. But obviously there's still a lot of research to go to do with touchscreens and also for research involving the thickness of the phones.